mathematicians, get ready as today we are going to measure to find the area of a rectangle with fractional side lengths. That means each one of the sides or both of the sides will have a fraction in the measurement. Let's get started with our I will statements. Remember, your I will statements are your goals for this lesson. They are what we are trying to work on and learn more about throughout our time together today. As we continue on in our lesson, make sure you have your mind focused on these three things and showing them to your teacher. I will read the I will statement first, and then we will read it again a second time together. Make sure you're reading it nice and loudly so I can hear you, but no shouting necessary. Let's look at the I will statements for today. The first one, listen to me. I will solve for the area of a shape. Read that one with me. I will solve for the area of a shape. Nice job. Let's look at our second one. I will define the area. Read that one with me. I will define the area. And the last one. I will multiply a fraction by a whole number. Say that one with me. I will multiply a fraction by a whole number. Nice job, mathematicians. Let's get into it for our, with our warm-up for today. For our warm-up activity, we are going to be doing finding volume. For this activity, you are going to need your whiteboards, and you're also going to need your markers to write on your whiteboards. Once you have those, come back and play the video. Let's look at finding volume for this shape. To find volume, we can use this formula. Add this to your whiteboards and then let's count the length, width, and height of this shape together. Let's count the length first. Count with me. One, two, three, four, five. We can fill in one of these blanks five units. Let's do that now. Now let's count the width of this shape. One, two. There's two units that make up the width of this shape. Let's add that into our formula. And finally, let's count the height of this shape. One, two, three, four cubes or units make up the height of this shape. Let's add that final number into our formula. Now that we have our formula, we can solve for the volume of this shape. Solve for the volume of this shape on your whiteboards now and wait for your teacher signal. And we'll play the video to see if you got the correct answer. Pause the video now. If we were to solve this problem, we can look at it and find that we have 40 cubic units. We can also look at the shape of our prism and we can break it down. If there are four layers and each layer has 10, then that means we can just do 4 times 10 and get the same answer. We can also do the same if we count how many layers are of 8 are in each of these cubes. If we were to do that, we would find out there's 5 layers of 8 in each of these, which still 5 times 8 gives us 40 cubic units. So there's different ways to solve this problem that could be multiplying your length times width times height or breaking your shape down into layers. Now it's your turn, mathematicians. For this warm-up, I'm going to show you two more prisms. Your job is to find the volume of each of these prisms. Now remember, there's different ways to do this. You can find it by finding different layers and counting how many cubes are in each layer then multiplying them together. Or you can find the length, width, and height and multiply all three together to find your total volume. Decide which is the best strategy for you. After, your classmates will share some of their different strategies out and model the different ways that they solve the problem. The two prisms can be seen on the board now. Pause the video and take your time finding the volume of each of these prisms. Then come back and we'll continue on with our lesson for today. All right, mathematicians, for the activity that I'm going to do with you today, you will need your problem set page for lesson 11. You will need a ruler and a pencil. 
pause your video and grab those now and then come back when you're ready to continue. Today, we are going to use our ruler to help us find the area of these different shapes on our pages. A ruler, even though it's not square units, we can measure the edges. And the ruler lets us measure the sides to find out the lengths that we might need to multiply to find the area of this shape. We are going to find the area of rectangle 1A together. For this, we're going to first need to measure the different lengths with our rulers. Let's grab our rulers and let's measure the length of both of these sides. Let's start at the bottom. While we measure the length today, we are going to, for the first one, draw tiled shapes. So that means we are going to draw a little line at each inch mark. Line your ruler up at the bottom corner and let's count how many inches we have to get to the opposite corner. We have one, two inches. Since we found that length, we can label it on the bottom. We also are going to put a little dash on that one inch line. Let's do that to the opposite side since we know they're the same measurements. Just gonna put a little dash on that one inch line. If you need more time to do that, pause the video and do it now. Now we are going to connect these lines. So line it up with your ruler and connect these lines with a nice light line. This gives us an idea about tiling. We did tiling to help us find area when looking at rectang rectangles previously. This is still a model that you can use, but it gets a little bit trickier once we get into using fractions. Now we don't see any fractions yet, but let's measure the other side and see if any come up. On the other side, we want to line up our ruler, make sure you're still on the inches side, and we can see that we have one, two, and we go halfway between two and three on that big line, which means we have two and a half inches for our length on this side. We want to write that, and then remember, we want to go back and put a little dash next to where every inch mark would be. Give yourselves time to do this now and connect your lines just like we did with our previous line. Then once you are done and you come back and your shape looks like mine, you can continue to play the video for further instructions. Now that we decompose our shape, we have a little bit more of a clear idea of how we can find the area of a shape that involves a fraction. We know we need to multiply these numbers together, but there's an easier way to estimate the area of this rectangle. If we are to break up this rectangle into two separate shapes, we'll be able to find the area of those shapes and add them together. Let's decompose the shape. Everybody take your pencil and we're just gonna shade in the top four boxes that we created. If we were to look at each of these boxes, they're one inch by one inch boxes. Or if we were to look at this whole square, it's two inches by two inches. If we wanted to find the area of a square that's two inches times two inches, we would just need to multiply those two numbers together. Everybody, What's two times two? Show me on your fingers. Two times two is four. So we wanna put our four underneath that. That means that this top shape, if we ignore the bottom, a two by two inch rectangle has the area of four inches and remember since we're talking about area we want to put squared next to it now we used our two inches up here but we know that we still need this portion of our rectangle 
One of our lengths is still going to be two inches. We didn't change how long it is, but we did change part of the side. We already used two of the two, two inches out of the two and a half inches we measured. That means we only have one half of an inch left. So we need to multiply two inches by one half. Can anyone show us on their fingers what two times one half is? Two times one half is one. That means the area of this bottom shape is one inch squared. So if we wanted to find the area for this entire shape here, we just need to add up the area of our two shapes. What's four plus one, everybody? Let's write that on our papers. Four plus one equals five. The total area for our shape would be five inches squared. So I'm going to write area equals five inches squared and circle my answer. Nice job, mathematicians. By breaking up the shape, we were able to find the area of the two smaller shapes and add them together to find the total area of the whole rectangle. Now you won't always tile the shape like we did here, but you can just break apart the measurements. You don't always need the specific tiles to help you either count or analyze the area of your shape. You guys will continue on with your problem set and practice some more with the other shapes on the page. Good luck, mathematicians, and I'll talk to you guys soon.